Two. Mm. One. What? trumpets and we just sound the blast we're gonna break down uh really what it is man to revisit that for the people that's new to it and, and some people who really hadn't really got a deeper understanding of it uh before we do man i'm gonna try to play this from here may not be too loud but i'm gonna play hallelujah who uh a song that me and nabi just finished man a single that we finna drop very soon um just lifting up the name man and it's, it's actually um that's what that this song is about is about the day of Yahweh, so I'm just gonna play it and see if we can get it loud enough. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the new Uram Utamim. Uh, hallelujah. Man, it's, it's going to be dropping soon as a single, so y'all get ready for that, man. Just lifting up the name above all names. Hallelujah. Uh, today, we're just going to be real quick. I'm not going to take up much time, man. Um, we're going to be breaking down um, Yom Turoah, which is the Day of Trumpets. Um, and we're going to look at uh, Uyakara 23. And 23. And we're going to break this down. I may have to um, later on put uh, my breakdown of what I've what I seen with the Aubrey, man. I, I'm going to try to start writing it on paper, man, just to give y'all a, a better understanding of it. But this is 23 and 23. We ain't going to take up too much time. Um, <clears throat> and Yahweh spoke unto Masha, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashraal saying in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall you have a Shabbat, a memorial of a blowing of Shaporim, a Kadash assembly. But here's the thing, man. When you look into that, the word is not Shabbat as we see it as normal, like a normal Shabbat. The word is Shabbatun. Shabbatun, um, in relations to that, would be in relations to how, you, if you ever heard what I said, like Dagun, Dagun was fish added seed. And then Nahashtun is like snake added seed. So what Shabbatun is, is a Sabbath added seed. It is in the image of a Sabbath. It actually has the Y and the Noon on the Shabbat. So what it's saying is, it must look like the image of the Shabbat. So when he says that this Day of Atonement is actually a Shabbatun, it means it should mimic a Sabbath. Even though it's the first day of the week or the first month, even this is day one on night side, this mimics a Sabbath. It looks exactly like a Sabbath is what Yahuwah was relaying in his words. Um, you can see that if you take um, H7677, you will see what I'm saying is um, Shabbatun. I'm going to read it. I took a picture of it so I could, could uh, show it. Let's see if it opens up. There we go. I'll show it to the screens so you can see it. My screen ain't going to show nothing. Inside, I don't know if y'all can see that right there. Uh, but I'll break it down later. Let me see if I can get it clear. I'll back it up. There we go. That's pretty clear right there. Um, it's 87677. It means to rest, but it's Shabbat Tum. Shabbat Tum is from H7676. That's where we get our Sabbath from. So whenever you see Sabbath, a Shabbat in the scriptures is H7676, but this is H7677. It, it comes from rest masculine, a Sabbatism, they say, or a special holiday, a Sabbath observance, Sabbatism of a weekly Sabbath day of atonement, sabbatical year. So what it's saying is it's the image of a Sabbath. If you notice that when you see um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread or you see as coming up Sakut, which is Sukkot, uh, it says that those first and that first and seventh day is a Kadash gathering. It don't call it a Sabbath though. It's just a Kadash convocation and you do no serve our work. This one is different, man. It's 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 um us it's gonna go into what uh Shaul or Paul said about what it is. So let's go back to twenty three. I'm gonna finish reading and we're gonna go there. Um you shall do no servile work therein. But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. And so, with that being said, um, did I, did I skip anything? No, I didn't. I, I read it all. But anyway, with that being said, it's the image of a Sabbath. So now, let's look at 1 Corinthians 15. I want to, well, well, before I go there, let's go to Colossians 2 real quick. And I'm just going to show you what it was, because it was a, something that Yahuwah was trying to do. Why would he do a memorial of trumpets? Why would it, why, what, is a, what are we remembering? So Paul says in his writings, he said, these are a shadow of things to come, these feasts. And so people have taken that and said, well, you don't need to do the feast because these are a shadow of things to come. That's not what he was saying. He was telling you to keep them, and we finna see that now. Man, it's crazy how people teach stuff that's not even now. So we're going to go to Canaan's 2. I'm going to start from verse 1. Um, Colossians 2, verse 1. Colossians 2, verse 1. Colossians 2, verse 1. Colossians 2, verse 1. Colossians 2, verse
from the beginning. I only got these, um, this and another passage to read because we're going to just close out. We've, man, we've already broke down Paul's writing and talked about um, some good things today, man. It was just doing what the commandment says, the Kadash gathering. But I wanted to share with you really what the day of trumpets represents. Hallelujah. <clears throat> this is Colossians 2 and 1. For I would that ye that you knew a great conflict I have for you and for them in Laodicea. For many have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance and understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of Allahim, and the, the Father, and of Mashiach, in whom are hid all the treasures of Hakmah, Uda'at, or wisdom and knowledge. I say this, as any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in rule, joining and beholding your order. Look at that. And the steadfastness of your belief in Mashiach. We were just talking about that order thing, man. But right here, for the rule. And as you have therefore received Mashiach at Yahusha, at Adonai, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the belief. As you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through vain philosophy, through philosophy, Salaki, and vain deceit after the traditions of men. We were just talking about that. And the rudiments of the world, rudimentary, you know, when you go to rudiments, it's, it's, it's like what it's saying is the origin of it is the world. So he's saying traditional men and rudiments of the world and not after Mashiach. For in him dwells all the fullness of Elohim in bodily form. Mm -hmm. I mean, who is Yahushua? There's no argument with that. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. In him, in whom, watch this, also ye are circumcised. With a circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the crimes of the flesh by the circumcision of Hamashiach. Buried with him in baptism or immersion wherein you are risen with him through belief in the operation of Elohim who has raised him from the dead. Watch this. And you being dead in your crimes and the uncircumcision of your flesh has he quickened together with him having forgiven all your pasha or transgressions, which is lawlessness. Here we go. Blotting out the handwritings of dogma that were against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way and nailed it to his tree, his ox. In the Greek, you'll see staros, which they translate to stake, but it's still tree, it's still ox. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made show of them openly, conquering over them in it. Let no man, here we go. This is the trumpet still. These are the feast. Let no man judge you in meat, in drink, or respect of a feast day. If you're respecting something, you're honoring it. If I respect something in respect to it, it's an honor to it. Or of a hadash or renewing or of the Shabbats. This is one of them. Shabbat 2, this is one of the Sabbaths. We read that in um, 24. We've seen 23, 24 of Uyakra or Leviticus. This was called a Shabbat or an image of a Sabbath. For which are the shadows of things to come for the body of Hamashiach. Now, what does he mean by that? Each feast that we keep is a shadow of what's coming from being in Mashiach. These are things in the future. When Yahuwah put these things in place, you got to understand it's on an eternal plane. That plane runs from the time he sees it to the end of the time he sees it. It's an eternal plane. So he does these feasts as patterns like he told Masha. Build a temple as a pattern of what you see. So when you see as a pattern those things, watch this. Let no man beguile you of your reward. For what? Keeping the feast. You see how people have turned that Colossians 2 into don't keep it, but that's not what Paul's saying at all. Don't let you, don't let man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and of worshiping of angels, 
intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up in his mind, and not holding the head. Yahushua is the head. From which the body of the joints and bands having nourishment ministered, knit together, increases with the Shagah or the increase of Allahim. Wherefore you be dead with Mashiach from the rudiments of the world. See, he's not talking about Torah. He's talking about worldly traditions, worldly things, worshiping of angels. We don't worship angels. We worship Yahuwah. What do they put on a tree, by the way, at the very top when they're done? An angel. An angel. Yeah, some people put stars. And a star represents a what? An angel. You can't get out of it. It's still pagan. <laughs> it's still pagan. <laughs> an angel, physical, a star, same thing. Both of them, angels. Wherefore you be dead with Mashiach from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are you subject to dogma? What he's saying, you live in the world, why are you subject to the world's doctrine? See, it's not Torah. Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using. So he's not talking about Torah because he said heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will by no mean what? Pass away. But he says these things are perishing. Right. I'm breaking this down for a reason, because when we go to 1 Corinthians, you're going to see something, man. But right, ooh. After the commandments and doctrines of men. He's telling you what you're following. He says the feasts are a shadow of things to come when we keep the feast, but you are following things after the commandments and doctrines of men. That's Colossians 2, 22, just in case anybody has an argument about that scripture. There is no way they can get out of that. It's not about keeping the feasts of your ooh. Which has indeed a show in wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians. This is 1 Corinthians 15, by the way. Moreover, Akim, or brethren, I declare unto you the good news which I preached unto you, which also have been received, wherein you stand. And by which you are delivered. If, see, it's conditional. You're not just, there ain't no one saved, always saved like we've been taught. It's a lie. Which you are also delivered or saved if you keep in the memory what I preached unto you. Unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Mashiach died for our crimes according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. All this was written. And that he was seen of Kephar and of the twelve. And that he was seen above 500 Akim. I've read this before, but this thing is just powerful. The witnesses. And it's a reason because it's going to lead up to what I'm talking about. And it says, he was seen over 500 people seeing him when he rose back. That's a big witness. <clears throat> I came at once, and of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are falling asleep. That means they're passed on. After that, he was, he was seen of Yaakov, then all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, and I am not worthy to be called an apostle because I was persecuted to call out assembly of Elohim. But by the hasad or kindness of Elohim, I am what I am. And his kindness, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the kindness of Elohim, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preached and so we believed. Now, if Mashiach be preached that he rose from the dead, how say among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? That means 500 plus people witnessed that he rose from the dead. How can you continue to preach that? He's talking to the Zadokim, or who they call the righteous ones, the Sadducees, it says in the King James. They did not believe in the resurrection. They believed that you got everything in one smooth swoop on earth. You didn't receive any reward. I'm going somewhere. I'm sorry. I'm just getting to the point. And if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Mashiach is not risen. And if Mashiach not be risen, then our preaching is in vain. For your belief is also in vain. Now, why am I reading this leading to the day of trumpets? The Mashiach did all this 
so that when we do this memorial of trumpet blowings, it's a remembrance of what's going to happen in the end times. Like Paul said, these are a shadow of things to come. So the Mashiach actually fell on a specific part of Yahuwah's eternal timeline to redeem those who believe in him to wait for this trumpet blowing. Mm. It was a perfect timing thing. Man, this is good, man. Barat Yahuwah, I'm sorry, I'm trying to calm down because I'm trying to get to it. For if the dead rise not, when this bugle sounds, the dead in Mashiach, because I think I always think of military. You know, when you, you see a military movie, everybody wake up and they get ready and get dressed. That's what I see. So when it sounds, the dead going to rise first. So he says, if the dead rise not, then Mashiach is not Mashiach raised. And he says, and your belief, if Mashiach not be raised, your belief is in vain. And then you are yet in your crimes. Why? Because it was the rule that raised him first. He came as the firstborn of those who sleep. So when the rule, which was a form of this trump, you're going to see in a second what I'm talking about. When it raised him, it was to prepare us for the same thing that he has. So it says, then they, also, then they also, which are falling asleep in Mashiach, are perished. And in this life only we have hope in Mashiach. That's what the Sadducees taught. That only in this life could you believe in him. Your best life now really is what they was teaching. We are almost men miserable. But now is Mashiach risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by Adam, is what it should say in the Aubrey. For since by Adam came death, then by Adam came resurrection of the dead. It had to come through the bloodline. For he says it right after this. I shouldn't even have to break it down. For if an Adam all die, even so Mashiach shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Mashiach, the first fruits, Afterwards, they that are in Mashiach at his coming. Then comes the end. Pay attention to this. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Allahim, even the Father, and he hath put down all rule and all authority and all power. I've broke this down in another teaching. You may have heard this. I'm going to say it again because this is what he's saying. The reason why we call on Yahushua now by the name Yahushua. You're going to get a new name in Revelations on a white stone that no man knows. He's going to show himself who he is. Yahushua, because he came as Yahushua, Yahu delivers. Then that same flesh that he empowered to do the work, the same flesh that was full of esteem, that was filled with the spirit and went up. If they seen going up, remember, they said, why do you stand here gazing? The same way he went up, same way he coming down. That's the book of Acts. That same power and that same body and that same form that he used at the end of all this is going to go back into the father. And then the father will be a hard again. But it has to be completed in Yahushua first. Because Yahuwah is Yahushua. But because he died in the form of the flesh and the form of the flesh was esteemed through his resurrection, he has to complete all the mission in that body before it's finished. That's why you see in Revelations, you hear it's finished again. He didn't just say it's finished when he was on the tree. That's just part of the story. The series, the saga continues. <laughs> That's funny because Shagah is where they get the word saga from, which means increasing. Man, anyway, stay tuned. <laughs> all right. So he shall put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he put all enemies under his feet. See? And the last enemy shall be destroyed is death. Death can't conquer Yahuwah. Yahuwah didn't even invent death, the book says. So in order to conquer death, he has to do it as a what? A man. See? So the reason why Yahuwah and Yahusha are separated, if you see in the scriptures, is because the work that Yahuwah is doing in the body he indwelled has to complete every mission until death is the final boss. God, dog. So even in his own understanding of this internal plane that we all sit on, he has a map that says, and I can't become myself to, to them yet until death completely is defeated by me. Man, boy, man. 
Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah, man. This, man this. So, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that Elohim may be all in all. It's exactly what I just told you. Look at that. So he's saying that once death is defeated, you, you knowing him as Ban Daud or the son of David would be no more. He's going he's gonna to take the sonship that he was in that bodily form and then become him, his fullness of himself again. Because he only became a little Lord of Elohim just to deliver us. All in all. All in all. Man, that's good stuff, man. That right there is so deep. Barat Yahuwah. That's the mystery. But anyway, else, what should we do who are baptized, who are immersed for the dead? Who, if the dead not rise at all, why are they immersed for the dead? He's not telling you to do it. He's saying people do it because they understand that they are immersing for the dead so that they can be joined to Yahweh. He's saying, why do they do that then? Is what he's asking. He's not telling Mormons. They do that. They immerse for the dead. So why stand we jeopardy in every hour? I protest to you, rejoicing that I have in Mashiach Yahushua, our master, I die daily. And if the manner of men... Uh, after the manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. Man, what happened over there? What does it <laughs> advantage me that if the dead rise not, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. What he was telling me was, don't be falling for the okie doke that people don't come back in the resurrection. Because the Sadducees was teaching that you only get what you get now. See, that's why I'm, I'm going to give you the, the back story on Shaul. When, when he began to preach Mashiach, he was among them. The Sadducees were trying to attack him. And he busts out, I believe in the resurrection. And the Pharisees came to save him. He, he, he was smart. You know what I'm saying? He worked the system to escape. And that's why he screamed that out. Because they were about to tear him apart. It got crazy. So, awake to righteousness. And commit no crime, for some have the dot of knowledge of Elohim, and I speak to your shame. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And what uh, and with what body do they come? You fool. Straight up. You that show uh, that which you sow is not living or quickening, except it die. So he's saying, How can men be raised up? You gotta understand, it's just like a seed. You when you plant it. Once the life goes through that seed, once it starts producing life, then it becomes whatever fruit it is. And that which you sow, you sow not that the body shall be and bore grain. It may a chance, it may a chance of wheat or some other grain. But Allahim gives it a body as he has pleased him. And to every seed, his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another of flesh of beasts, another of fish, another of birds. That also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the esteem of the celestial is one and the esteem of the terrestrial is another. What is he saying? You got two different type bodies. You got an esteemed body and you got your regular human body. That's why he says we will take, get rid of the corruptible and put on incorruptible. So he's, ta he's talking real deep, man, but I'm, go I'm going somewhere. There is one esteem of the sun and one esteem of the moon and another esteem of the kukubim of the stars and one star difference from another star in esteem. Also is the resurrection of the dead. See? Everybody's going to look different because you got to understand we're building up treasures in the Shemayim. Everyone's going to have different stones in their crown for whatever work they did. That's what he's saying. The way the stars are esteemed, you're going to receive that same type of esteem. Everyone's going to have a different esteem based on how they serve. It is, and he says, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in, corrupt, in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in, if it is sown as dishonor, it is raised in esteem. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. 
It is sown in a creational body. It is raised in a spiritual body. There is a creational body and there is a spiritual body. And so is it written, the first man Adam was made a living soul and the last Adam was made a living root. Hmm. That's deep, bro. Because when that spirit blew into that, that, that mold of man that he made with his own hand, Adam became a living soul. But that when the spirit, he already blew into Yahushua. And once he raised him, he was a living spirit. So that he's telling you it's two different types of bodies. So the one that Adam gave is the flesh that we see. But the one that the second Adam gave is a spirit that we don't see that's going to show himself at this last trump. That's what I'm getting to, the last trump, by the way. Hold on, people. Change is coming. <laughs> How be it? That not the first which was spiritual, but that was created. And afterwards, that which is spiritual. The first man is of Haaretz. He's earthy. The second man is Yahuwah from heaven. Right there in 47. What else you going to get? I don't know what other translations say because that, that is clear. First man, second man is Yahuwah from heaven. That's what I'm doing. What, a, what? You said high rates and stuff. Okay, okay, I got you. The, 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 the Aubrey, okay. Keeping you straight, isn't she? No, she just don't want the Aubrey. Yeah, <laughs> said people follow. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is Yahuwah from heaven. As is the earthy, such as those who are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such as those who are heavenly. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Man. And as we have borne the image of earthy, we shall also bear the image of he heavenly. But watch what he said. As we bore the earthly, we shall also bore, bear the heavenly. So that's what the spirit is for in our body. It's going to merge your mortal man with the spirit man and make you an esteemed being like Yahushua was. That same body that was laid in the tomb and covered and, and anointed with spices and all that is the same body that he had when the rule hit him. He became this esteemed one that he said, handle me not, don't touch me, for I have not ascended to the Father. He could walk through walls and everything. Hmm. Man. So we're going to get the same type of body. So now, brethren, that flesh and blood, now I say this, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Allah. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, here we go again. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So even the ones that are still alive when this happened. Now, we might all not sleep, but everybody's going to receive this transition. Mm -hmm. Boy, boy, boy. In a moment, this is where I've been wanting to get. I wanted to get all the way down this because I didn't want to just read last Trump. And you think that since Trump was the president before this one, <laughs> this, it already kicked off the whole thing because you heard last Trump. Because you got people who crazy like that. I mean, you know people crazy like that. <laughs> I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, the last Trump, it says it. People crazy. <laughs> so I just wanted to read that. Oh, boy, so I can get to this. <laughs> in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last Trump. What is the last Trump? In the day of trumpets, this was a memorial blowing. Why? Because throughout time, it's to remember the trump that would sound, that last resounding trump that would lead to this. For the shofar shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Woo. And we shall be changed. Do you understand? Why? <laughs> Let me see how I'm going to put this. I'm trying to word this and be careful with my wording. In the seventh month, first day of the month, there's a trumpet memorial. That trumpet memorial is to kick off this whole uh, month of a shadow of things to come. Trump comes, then there's a changing. There's a, a, a zoom that takes place, a day of atonement, to make you at one, at one minute, is what the atonement really means, to make you at one with Yahweh, is to cleanse you up. After that cleaning up, there is a saku, a tabernacle, that we dwell with him, and we dwell with him when he comes. 
So the reason why this last Trump is vital, that last Trump blows, what happens based on what Paul is saying here, based on what I see in other scriptures, when that Trump hits, the atonement happens, and he comes for Sukkot. It's like a same space because one day to Yahuwah is a thousand years. So while we celebrate this one day of Trump, it's going to be one day to kick off the thousand year reign of us resting. That's why it is a Shabbat tomb or an image of a Sabbath. Why? Why did he use image of a Sabbath versus Sabbath? Because that thousand year reign is a that time that we rest. It is going to be the image of a Sabbath. Well, a thousand years we are going to rest with Mashiach. <clears throat> wow. Man, so... Back then, Yahuwah knew that. So he set it up as an ensign and an example to say when you keep this feast of trumpets or memorial blowings, it is to continually show you the relationship that I have with Yasharal, my bride. So when you blow the trumpet, you are sounding for the bride to gather. That's why it's a Kadash convocation where it's a gathering and we do no so of our work. Because it's representing the gathering of his bride. Ugh. Man, that's deep. That's good stuff. So whenever, so whenever we hit his last trump, wherever it will be, it's going to automatically kick in place things happening with us. We don't have to worry about what the world's doing. Mm -hmm. The world's still going to be him for, for that time. Because they're going to have to witness. They are going to witness what Yahuwah is going to do for his people. But when that trump hits, when you hit that, people are going to be being changed the dead is going to be being changed and see this is where they mess up and get the rapture from but it's not even that when his appearing at this trunk it brings them up to him and they are changed in a moment and twinkle an eye to come back and reign in the full body that they were and keep that full Sabbath for a thousand years you can't live a thousand years because that's why he mentioned Adam. Remember, he died within the day. A thousand years. He died within the day. Adam's flesh can't live a thousand years to reign with him. Because he said, in the day you eat the flesh, I mean, eat the fruit, you shall die. So that flesh died that day. And that's why he lived to what? Nine, what Adam was, what? 937. So he died within the day. 930. But he died within the day. So when he died within the day, he couldn't fulfill out the thousand years. So the last trump is going to blow to change you so that you can fulfill what Adam couldn't in the flesh because the second Adam brought a spirit to mingle with your first Adam to fulfill the, oh, the thousand years. Hallelujah. It's a payment happening to those who endure. A reward. That's what he was talking about in Colossians. Of keeping the feast. Go ahead, Op. And a destruction of the death. Come on. The death is destroyed. Go ahead, Op. That's right. Man, come on. Come on. Come on. And so see, so because of, it said what? Because of one man's fall, we all died. So we can't live a thousand full years. We can't even, watch this. We can't even have a day with Yahushua. That's right. We can't even live a day with him. I know in my job, you have a day with the DM. Everybody be excited. What? Get to spend a day with the DM. It's 15 minutes. <laughs> That's not a day. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. Yeah. But, but. Right. But now you get a whole day with him because that's what he wanted with Adam, a communal. He wanted to have a whole full relationship with Adam throughout time. But Hashatan tricked him into eating the fruit and he died within that day. That's why he said, you will not surely die. Here's one thing I think is a slap in the face to Hashatan in that sense. I believe Yahuwah allowed him to prophesy and hear the prophecy he done and be smacked in the face with it. You will not surely die. That's, that's a fact. Because Adam didn't surely die because Mashiach was coming. Right. 
He had no idea that that was happening. He took on a form of death, but it was not unto death. Boy, boy, boy. And, and that also Man. Goes, Go ahead, huh? You breaking this down the way you're breaking it down also, <coughs> also goes to um, answer uh, many of the anti-Mashiachs, the anti-Mashiach um, Hebrews. Right. That, that say that all you have to do is just uh, repent, come back to the Torah, and then, and then everything is reversed. But that's not true. Right. Because this right here even shows that because we had, we had even righteous ancestors that still had to die within that day. That's because right. Because that curse was still upon them. That's right. They were still cursed. Only Mashiach could Even Methuselah, curse. the oldest man that lived, Methuselah lived 969. He could not surpass that day. He was still a curse upon him. And that last enemy is death. That final boss, he could not fulfill the final boss attacking him because that flesh brings on corruption. This is what Paul is talking about. That's why it sounds so deep because he understood the mystery. As written from him in scriptures, Mashiach had to come on that plane. He had to die on that tree because he knew the final outcome. Remember it said, had they, not, had they known, they would have never killed the prince of life. If they knew that their final boss was going to be defeated, they would have never touched him. But this brings the sensor. Once this thing blows and you change, you go into atonement. Mm. You are already atoned. Why? Because you have suffered. These atonements are shadows. When we keep atonement in the ninth day when we Zoom and we fast, and then that tenth day we have afflicted ourselves and we come again before Yahuwah, we have judged ourselves, like Paul said, so that we will not be judged. We knew we needed an atonement. So when it comes, once that trump hit, instantly you are atoned, and now you succoop with him. You tabernacle among us. Oh. Boy, boy, boy. Let's, let's finish Good. this out, man. Good stuff. <clears throat> the shofar shall sound the dead. See, that's the, that's the, corrupt, the corrupted shall raise incorruptible. And we shall all be changed. It's just like when Mashiach rose the first time. Remember, the dead rose with him and went to the city of Daoud to preach. He did it before. That's right. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to fight it because I be wanting to sing that. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, he, as he went into the city of Daoud, where was that? Yerushalayim. So when this new Jerusalem comes down, we're all there just like they were. So it, he, he's, it's like it's not a second coming. I tell people their eyes get big when I say I don't believe in the second coming. He's came here a bunch of times. It's just another coming. So it says for the, corru in the corruptible, this corruptible, he's, Paul was talking about his body. This corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass when he says that it's written, death is swallowed up in winning the battle. Hallelujah. This is prophesied. Death is swallowed up. This was already prophesied. Oh, death, where is your sting? See there? Oh, Shaul, where is your conquering power? It is not there. This was already prophesied. The sting of death is crime. See? Because crime right rose in our veins. Through our blood, we have the crime of Adam in there. That's what makes us age. That's what makes us wrinkle. That's what makes us rot. That's why they'll tell you the first thing they do when you die is remove your blood so they have time to, to embalm you. Because your blood is what's corrupting you. Mm. Man, boy. And the strength of crime, boy, here we go, is the Torah. Now, what does he mean by that? The strength of crime is the Torah because if you never knew the Torah, you never knew crime. Yahushua said that. Watch this. He was the Torah made flesh. He said, had I come to you, you'd have no crime. Look at that. The Torah came again. He said, and because I'm here, you have crime. He said, had I not come, you have no crime. The Torah redid exactly what it did too. Man, boy. But thanks be to Allahim, which gives us the conquering power through Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach. Therefore, beloved brethren, be steadfast, endure. Same story, same thing we always hear. Unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh, 
for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Us coming to these feasts, us preaching the good news to our family members, to co-workers, to friends, going out doing outreach, is not in vain in Yahuwah. Because everything we're doing to the world, it may look crazy. Man, what y'all doing? Y'all out right there blowing them horns and all that. But all truth and honesty, man, you know, when we go to the beach, these folks ask about these things. Oh, dude, that was cool, man. We are Kadash people. But when we do this, it may seem like we're just doing it as, as like a show or just continuing to do it. No, you are doing this in the belief. This is the belief that when he comes, what do he say? When I come up on my servants, will I find them so doing? When I pop up on my servants and they're doing exactly what I said, or will they be beating one another? Mm. See, didn't he talk about that? Fighting, debating. Mm. Is that not considered beating? To Yahuwah, you fighting, you always at each other. He said, will I find my servants doing this or will I find them doing what I told them to do? Mm. That's the key to this whole thing. We got to continue to do this in loyalty to him, knowing there's a reward coming. This is a shadow of things to come. So it says in the day of trumpets, it's just, it's just three verses. I'm going to read them one more time. And I'm going to close out with this. I want you to understand what this is. This is why it's called a memorial of trumpets, a remembering, a zakar, a zakara, a fullness of remembering. And I'm, I'm done after this. 23, 23. Let's go back to it again. I just had to bring you through all that to get you to understand what he actually did. And Yahweh spoke unto Masha, saying, Speak ye to the children of Yahshuaal, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, that's a count, that's a renewing, shall you have a Shabbat, because that's going to be the rest. When he blows that trumpet and we come and, and we are changed with him and we come and reign with him, that begins a Sabbath. That's day one of a thousand year Sabbath. Oh, woo. Man. Day one. Man. And it completes what Adam had messed up. Hashatan knew this. He was trying to kill the man, literally. He was the first murderer. He was a murderer from the beginning. He wanted to kill him, but Yahuwah already had a plan. That's why he left the tree there. Yahuwah sits back and just lets it happen because his plan is going to be fulfilled. That's why the angels say, do we not see what's going on? Why do you not say anything? Yahuwah was just like, oh, I already knew this was going to go down. I already got a plan for it. Mm. So this Sabbath is a representation of the rest that we're going to receive when Mashiach comes. They say Mashiach is all through this book. I believe that because I see it. Everything Mashiach was designed to be and do is everything that we see in this feast. On the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of the blowing of trumpets or shafars, a Kadash assembly. It's the same thing. You shall do no servile work in it. Any work that it has to be balled out, meaning like finishing your job, you got to start your task. You can't just, back then too, there was no punch in the clock. You had to complete your task and then you know you got paid what? At the end of the day, that's book. You can even see in the parable when the man, the man paid everybody a penny, even those who came at the very end, they said, the ones who've been here, it still got the same payment. He said, is it not my money to give? You knew what you agreed for. You agreed for a penny. So he was, he was basically giving an example of those who are coming in are going to get the same reward as those who have been in. Mm -hmm. And that's great, too. He Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, huh? Go ahead. He said, and he, <laughs> man, he went over my head. And this just recently that, that uh, he brought this to me. And at the end of that, he said, why are you mad? Because I'm good. That's right. So he was like showing them that, hey, I'm merciful to them by giving them what I'm giving you. The and same reward. Rejoicing, you're upset. He said, but this is my mercy. This is my goodness. That's Why it. are you upset with me? Because I'm good. That's powerful. Man. So even the Nabim, the prophets, the scribes, Hanuk, everybody knows that in the end time, he's going to reward us with the same thing he rewarded them for mm -hmm. being in it so long. That's what he was saying. And so that's why it's a memorial. I asked you who I'm like, why is it a memorial already of trumpet blowings? He was like, all this is a remembrance throughout time. It's been remembered. I'm coming. 
And this last trump is going to sound a gathering of everybody. It's, it's going to be amazing how many people we see. We're going to know them because our root is going to bear witness to them. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's a nuke. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's Yahuwah none. You know, we're going to see it and bear witness to that. It says, you shall do no serve our work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. That's why Paul said, present yourself a living sacrifice, kadash, and acceptable unto Yahuwah, which is your reasonable service. That's your offering now. Mm -hmm. The fact that you are living in him is the offering made by fire. What did he say? He said, you were baptized with water. But one comes that will baptize you with what? Fire and the root. See? So your offering is already fire. Mm -hmm. Boy, it's good stuff. he covered it all. So that we don't even have to worry about anything else but what? Obey. His commandments are not grievous. So he covered the fire offering by putting the fire in us. Man, man, man. It's man. Like, Yahweh Yahoo said it's like fire. That's right. Shut up in his bones. The root is the fire that's rewarding. It's the payment. So now, all we have to do now is resound and believe. Believe he's coming. I'm encouraging you to believe he's coming. I'm encouraging you and telling you that when he does, you are going to reap a reward so great that you will never experience before in your life. He came in that time over 2,000 years ago. He visited here. The writings show it. The world shows a worldwide darkness that happened. The world shows the Mashiach came. Even Albert Einstein, I hear atheists with this all the time. He says, he pretty much, I'm paraphrasing, he says, you are pretty much an idiot if you don't believe that the Messiah walked the earth. He said, it's too much evidence. He came. He did his purpose and he left for those who are looking for him. Those who are awaiting his coming. Those who are looking, Paul says, for his appearing. Not a rapture. He's going to appear in the clouds before he even touched the earth. And that's when we come and meet him. And that's when we reign with him. It's already in us though. It's not a rapture. It's just a... <laughs> you remember them toys? <laughs> I'm sorry. You remember them toys growing up called the Popos? They were like little bears, but you flip them out and they become pillows. I don't know. I'm sorry. The 80s, it's the 80s toy. Yeah, I remember. Called Popos. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the way I get it when Yahuwah know, talks about that. He's going to take what's in you and pop it out. And that very spirit that's in you has changed your whole, enveloped your whole being. That even if you're still alive, you're dead because you died through Adam. Even the dead that haven't slept are going to be made alive through the rule that envelops them and makes them whole. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Look, I took the popos and made it deep. No. It's a dead. No. It's a dead, Steph. No. And it was actually good. Deep the popos. Yeah. 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 Like how you said how it popped out and covered it. Yeah. The and, and see, watch this. The popo was a pillow. You're going to rest oh. in it. Huh? Oh. Rest. Boy. The popo was a pillow, bruh. It's the symbol of Yahuwah's rest. Come see me. But listen, but that's how he's going to do. He's going to envelop you and make you into something that he's already planned for you to be. That's why the spirit overshadowed the earth at the beginning of creation. Look what it did. When he, the spirit went out over the earth, it enveloped Haaretz, the earthy was enveloped by the spiritual. Mm -hmm. It was a shadow of things to come. Man. That's good. Ab Yahuwah told him, for being the Gadul rule, the great spirit, mm -hmm. through the Rabbah, for your rule, for your spirit, left with us by your son, Yeshua, the deliverer, the Mashiach, Yahushua. Thank you. It says, until Shiloh comes, the book said, you have shown me that Yahuwah Shalom is Yahuwah Yahusha. And we await for the deliverance of the great king, the Gadul Malak, to save us, to deliver us from this world that we live in. We await him. And we know that he is coming. And we blow our shofars, we blow our trumpets, and we sound the alarm. 
to a dying world. Let us continue to be those to Ra, to Ruaz, the trumpets that you have called. Let us continue to be those watchmen, whether men or women, in Yahuwah, Yahusha. Let us continue to speak as the oracles of Yahuwah. Let us continue to serve you and keep your feasts in obedience to your matzahut, your commandments. Torah, Abba, for all that you have done for us and all that you continue to do. And we baruch you this day on your seventh yun. Amen. 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 Amen.